Now, Russia's, um, Russia intensifies its campaign to knock out the Ukraine's um, energy infrastructure. Uncertainty is growing over Western backing for the country. A letter made public. The White House has told the U.S. Congress that funds designated for providing aid to Ukraine would run out by the end of the year. The European Union is also facing difficulties in agreeing on a new 50 billion euro lifeline for Ukraine. Both sides are worried intensifying Russian assaults on civilian infrastructure could mean defeat for Ukraine. In the U.S., right-wing congressional Republicans are expressing increasing skepticism towards approving more funds for Ukraine. About $6.1 billion in addition aid funds are now being held up by the U.S. Congress. And joining me now from Belgium to discuss international funding for Ukraine is Global Affairs Analyst Colin Zawinki. Good to have you join us. So this, um, this paucity of fund or the failure to approve funding rather for Ukraine, is that an indication of wavering support from the West? Well, I believe... Um... Ukraine, to uh, some extent, is right when it um, surmised that uh, what they are dealing with here is probably uh, fatigue. Uh, because, um, you know, uh, initially, the two countries, as uh, well, the two um, powers, United States and uh, the EU as a bloc, actually came in with uh, quite some gusto, and uh, you could actually talk of. Um, you know, some sort of 99.9% uh, .9 support, uh, both uh, domestically, but also uh, politically. Uh, but you see, uh, things have taken uh, another turn uh, for varying uh, reasons. In the U.S., uh, the reason is that they are facing also some budgetary uh, issues. Uh, as you know, uh, pre um, pressures, uh, they very narrowly averted them, um, you know, uh, government shutdown. They have managed to, uh, you know, find a temporary way out of it now. And so approving the 61 billion uh, that is supposed to go to Ukraine uh, is seen as something, um, you know, down in the ladder, not somewhere up. In the uh, EU, I think it's a different uh, kettle of fish entirely because um, while the, uh, you know, uh, interest is still there amongst the um, EU politicians to get this uh, done and dusted, uh, they are also facing um, a number of uh, domestic uh, issues, uh, two uh, critical one of which is uh, the Prime Minister of uh, Hungary, who is using this, uh, the blockage of uh, the budget as, um, you know, a bargaining chip, uh, while the uh, far-right, um, you know, uh, party in the Netherlands, uh, you know, have won um, uh, an election uh, two weeks ago. Uh, and they won that election on the platform of, um, you know, leaving the EU. So, you see, these are, um, you know, very, very murky waters to uh, navigate, and the clock is really ticking for Ukraine because this is an existential uh, problem for them. Mm -hmm. and, and this opposition to funding for Kyiv, um, is that what we will likely see if a Republican emerges president um, in the U.S. next year? And as we continue to see more far-right candidates emerge across Europe? Well, it will not make things easier, certainly. Um, Donald Trump has been, um, you know, seen or heard to be speaking from both sides of his mouth when it comes to um, uh, Ukraine. At some point, you know, he will say that um, he's, uh, he has a magic wand to get uh, Russia out of there immediately. On uh, another sweep, you hear him talking about the fact that um, uh, America shouldn't have uh, anything to do with it in the first place, actually playing uh, to his uh, base. And of course, uh, out uh, here in Europe, there is, um, you know, a serious uprising of uh, far right. Many, um, you know, countries of the EU are set to go into election. As a matter of fact, they are already uh, in election mood. Uh, but one good thing that differentiates Europe from the U.S. in this case is that um, overall uh, there is still, um, you know, civil society support for, uh, you know, the uh, EU supporting uh, Ukraine. So I do not see that as much of a major problem in the EU uh, as it is for, um, for the U.S. Uh, should uh, 
Donald Trump, um, you know, emerge uh, president. Mm. And we know that right now in the uh, in the EU, um, there is a, a meeting of, of you know EU members to debate um, support, debate membership of Ukraine, Slovakia, Slovakia rather, Georgia, and other countries um, in the EU. But I wanted to ask you what all of this means for the morale in Ukraine and just overall um, the war. Well, the. Um, the Ukrainian president, uh, of course, uh, is an ever optimistic, uh, you know, bullish uh, gentleman. He is uh, managed, you know, under very, very difficult uh, circumstances to keep uh, the mood uh, and the morale in the country high. You know, by the way, you know, he calls his uh, relationship, gets assertive when he has to. But I think he's becoming, um, it's taking too long to sustain, you know, such high morale, because uh, look at the optic. Uh, they found that uh, the EU was meant to, um, you know, channel to uh, uh, Ukraine is about 40 uh, billion United, uh, euros, which is projected to sustain uh, the economy of Ukraine until 2027. Okay, so that means that for the next, uh, you know, four years, they will, uh, you know, have some breathing space. Now, imagine such form being, um, you know, uh, stressful. So, yes, it's causing a whole lot of um, anxiety within uh, Ukraine. Uh, but there are good reasons to, uh, to be optimistic that uh, Europe is going to uh, get out of this and get the 40 billion. Uh, the only thing it might <laughs> entail is that uh, they would have to play the Hungarian Prime Minister, Viktor Orban, they, will, they might have to play his card by unfreezing, uh, you know, I think 24 uh, billion uh, euros that uh, they have uh, tied up and not send it to him because of uh, uh, human rights, um, you know, rule of law issues in that country. So that might be the, um, you know, uh, the bargaining chip, really. Mm, absolutely. For, for Viktor Orban, it, it could be posturing. And then Ukraine could be a, a bargaining chip. We'll also see the outcome, or watch out for the outcome of that meeting um, in Europe. Thank you so much for talking to us, as always. Always a pleasure. Global Affairs Analyst, Colin Zumiki. Thank you for having me.